in January, I got this overwhelming, almost burning desire to volunteer at hospice. I didn't question it. I was surprised. I mean, as a nurse practitioner with decades of caring for mostly elderly patients and many patients um, were near the end of their lives. I'm used to, and I have been used to working with, you know, ill and, and, and sick and ill and dying. However, I've never actually worked at hospice. So where did this desire came from? I can't tell you, but there was a need deep down in my bones to volunteer at hospice. I quickly found hospice of my choice. I knew exactly where I wanted to be, in which facility, even though I've never been there before, I knew that it existed. Did the training, started volunteering. Um, few days, I would come once a week for a few hours. Uh, probably second week I was there, I meet this Russian speaking, elderly person who, um, it's a story of itself. I have to do a whole different post about um, his very interesting journey. Um, he had cancer pretty much everywhere. He had a tracheotomy tube, which is, you know, the tube in inside his throat that helped him to breathe. Um, he was definitely at the end of his life, but we're not talking, you know, you know, very fast. We're not talking days or weeks, you know, we're talking months probably in terms of his, um, how long would he live? Okay, so I meet him, we kind of hit it off, you know, he was difficult that and, and he was nice. And, you know, every week I would see him, it would be different type of him. I brought him some food. I even brought him cigarettes. Yes, yes, don't judge. Um, hospice, it's all about comfort care. And if somebody wants to smoke in the end of their life, um, please read Atul Gawande's book, Being Mortal it'll really shed the light on what the end of life should be like, because it should be really about the comfort care. Anyway, um, people at hospice recognize that I speak the same language. So they started sometimes calling me, asking me to translate. Uh, so this is going on for a few months, you know, on and off. I see the guy, I help to move him to another facility. There was a lot of things that I helped to do. Um, and now he's, you know, pretty far away from me. So now maybe I see him once a month. Now comes um, April, end of April, I get a call from a nurse that says, you need to come, he is at the end. Long story short, you know, he, he pulled his tracheotomy out uh, and um, I went. I went and he peacefully took his last breath while I was holding his hand. I was very happy. M meanwhile, by the way, I had to rearrange my schedule, cancel some of my meetings because I just knew it again, deep down in my gut that I had to be there for him. Keep in mind, you know, when people are transitioning, you know, they are in, you know, what we call coma, you know, he's not conscious. He has no idea that I'm there or so we think, although I truly believe that people know and, and they hear, the, the hearing goes last. So studies show that, um, Apparently, people still hear what's what's happening, even though there seem to be a kind of you know in the coma, not reactive. Um, so he passed away, and this would have been the end of the story, and I would have never taped it if not for that. Remember that overwhelming feeling that I had that pull for me to have volunteer at hospice when he died. That need was gone, and. It took me, I think, a few days to maybe even a few weeks to recognize what had happened because that need to be there once a week for a few hours, like it was kind of on my schedule, was gone after he passed away. And I thought about it for a long time. And I feel that, believe it or not, whatever your beliefs are, you believe in God or universe or nothing or everything, there was some sort of soul contract that I made with him there in heavens before we came here on this earth that I will be there and to help him transition. He did not want to die alone. And this is a fascinating, not because of, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing this for ego. I'm not sharing it with you because I want you to say how great I am. That's not the reason. The reason is I wanted to tell you when you get the overwhelming desire to do something, whatever it is, write a book, write a song, paint a picture, volunteer at hospice, go, you know, help cross the streets for, for people. Don't question it. 
just do it. There is much bigger play where you playing the role that you have agreed to play and just go with it. Go with it because it's beautiful and you will feel that you fulfilled some sort of mission, some sort of, you know, contract. And, and, you know, I wasn't sad and I'm not sad. I'm very grateful that I had that experience and I'm happy that I was able to do something for somebody, even though, you know, believe it or not, I promise or I didn't promise. So anyway, with that, I just want to tell you, my friends, follow your dreams, follow your desires. When you feel something in your bone that you want to do it, just do it. And I do want to write a little essay about it. So help me maybe pick a name for it. I'm very curious of what you'll say. Well, thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon.